also as you probably saw there I was able to put everything on the kayak very simply very easily not a whole lot of effort so add a couple of rods the power pole if you have a, a bucket or, or something for bait take that along but you're on and off the water pretty quick and easy as far as setting up the kayak before you go in all right so today we're talking about the lifetime tamarack angler it's a 10 foot kayak it's one that is popularly purchased at walmart or just online off of Amazon. Right now, I think more often you're gonna see a 12 foot version of this kayak out there, but I believe this one is still available. So what we're doing is we're gonna actually walk, walk around the kayak, see what I did to it, what mods that I made and added to make this a successful fishing kayak. So first of all, I wanna start off by saying that a lot of times these are referred to as poor man's kayak. I like to think of it as a budget kayak because not everybody who has one is technically poor. Perhaps they have a family that they need to take care of, young family, which is my case. And we have to be a little bit more frugal and a lot more aware of what we're doing with our finances. So sometimes it takes a little bit of planning. What I have been doing is putting away a hundred bucks here, 200 bucks there along the way and saving up for my next kayak and which I am that close to it. So I will be putting in an order for a new kayak soon. So stay tuned for that in the future. But without any further ado, let's get right into this kayak and see perhaps some ideas that you can take. Again, these are a lot of this is not my original idea. Other things that I've researched YouTube and found them uh, to be useful for me and modified them a little bit. So let's take a look. So I want to start right here in the front. I wanted a front facing camera and I didn't have any gear tracks on here. It doesn't come with any. It just comes with this Scotty mount right here on the side, which is very useful and I like the placement of it. It works for me and I haven't added any other rod holders because I haven't really needed a use for having them up here except for that one rod. But going back to this, I just took a, a, a cheap suction mount GoPro. Um, it's not a GoPro one, it's just an aftermarket one that you would get in a pack online. I can also put that in the description to, to share what it was that I got. It was about $16 to $20, you got a whole bunch of other things in it. So basically what I did there is mounted that right here. I put a bunch of goop under it and I screwed it in with self tappers and it holds really well. Uh, the only problem with the camera that I had on there, it really, you hear everything on the hull. Any hull slap, anything you drop, it picks it up very well so moving on back this i've seen many people do literally it's just a practice golf golf ball i took some little tethers that i had and i modified them to go right through i drilled the hole through the center and poked them right through the, as you see the scupper hole i thread this piece down underneath it and just push it right in and you've got six of those throughout the kayak there's two under the seat back here if you can see that I don't know how well it shows and then you've also got two more in the back those I don't have any threads through because these are the only two that I will pull at any point in time to empty out the kayak this is a problem here this opening as you can see there's no seals on this and it does take on water depending on how rough it is out there. I might be out in waters that I shouldn't be out uh, in this kayak, but I, I push it about as far as I can and, and I'm very careful with it. I'm aware of, of the weather and keeping track of everything else so that I don't put myself in jeopardy. But that is something to take note that it does take on water and the more screws you, you put into it, the more opportunity it has to take on water from other areas. So keep that in mind. On the older versions, these are flat as you can see. But on the, the newer version of this kayak, they kind of have a, a, a bevel to them, and that could be an issue with the crate. Uh, but before we go there, let's go back over here to the seat and show you how I updated that. So the original seat is literally just this back piece right here. I'm going to take this off for you so you can see it a lot better. This is the seat that comes standard with this kayak. It's literally just a, a padded back. It's not that well padded. And then you've got this bottom, which is literally just a very thin mat. It's practically useless. You can't be on this kayak for, for more than a couple hours at a time without hurting very badly. So what I do is I put the seat into it. Uh, I keep this seat back in because it keeps it in place for me. 
So it, it's definitely helpful to leave it in. Some take it off, others choose not to. But the real key here is the stadium seat. I'm gonna try to put it in here one-handed, which shouldn't be too difficult. So literally it just sets in. It fits in there perfectly. There's no wiggle room, no nothing. Once I put these bungees in, and as you can see the bungees also hold my crate in place. So keep that in mind as we go through that it's definitely something. So I wrap it around the post and literally I'm just hooking it onto the crate on that side. And I repeat that process on the other side and it holds it. It's not going anywhere, even with that one bungee. Just like that, you've got that seat in and it's not going anywhere. I can literally shake the entire kayak and it's not moving. So this seat is definitely worth it. I will link that in the description. Okay, moving on to this side here. So I'm gonna move on to the anchor trolley. As you can see, some of these pieces are starting to corrode and to rust because they are not stainless steel. So keep that in mind. When you purchase a kit, that you get something that can handle the corrosion or you can seal it yourself there are products on the market that allow you to seal things that'll keep them protected from from corrosion but i was not keeping that in mind when i built this anchor trolley but it came with the anchor so as you can see here it's a three and a half pound anchor so this kit would be perfect for fresh water but in the salt water it definitely uh, is subject to corrosion so keep that in mind but that's a really inexpensive addition that will help you to keep your place and, and really be more effective and, and be able to be present that bait as it needs to. I also added this here and that is a, uh, allows me to hook my anchor line. If this is just the anchor trolley line, I wouldn't do it for this normally, but I just wrap it like that for the anchor and it'll hold in place. It's not going anywhere. And it allows me to even just quick release it that way if I want to, if I need to get away from it quickly. All right, moving back. Now these I built uh, from scratch. It's not something that, that you can buy on the market or anything of that nature, but I built them from scratch because this kayak is 10 feet long and 34 inches wide. It does have some stability to it. As you can see, the hull is very flat there's a little bit of point up here for a cutting but it's a pretty flat hole and it um, it does create a little bit more drag so it's definitely not the fastest kayak but you really do get what you pay for but i built these out of just pvc joints so you see it's a 45 uh, degree and here's just a perpendicular joint so they're very simple i used screws because I wanted to be able to take it apart and adjust it as needed. These are just little bumpers from Walmart, uh, 20 inch bumpers I believe they are, so not, not too expensive at all. So this is a good addition to add stability. And I can take these out. I wanted to be able to remove them. So I just literally pull this guy out and this will come right out of there. So you can do that for transport or storage or anything else and it just latches on super simple so it's a good way to be able to make this removable i'd initially added two perpendicular points here and i have some rocket launchers that stick out but i don't use them since i added the crate and i'm going to move on to that next and this is simple these bungees came with the kayak it's all part of it i literally just sawed little sections out of it as you see here and when you, if you saw on the video portion of this video when I was actually putting it on it snaps right on and it pulls it it's not going anywhere you're not going to lose that and it holds the seat and this in place all around these outriggers so pretty pretty steady and stable and it's not going anywhere 
Moving back over to this side, I added three rod holders for, for just transport. I don't really carry more than two to three rods at any given time, but these adding it to the side of a crate is really, it's priceless and it helps so much when you're out there and just, I keep two rods and I keep my net readily available right here. And these you can buy on Amazon, they're inexpensive. You can buy them at uh, Bass Pro, Dick's, I'm sure anywhere that they sell any angling, um, anywhere they sell anything for anglers, you're gonna be able to find these products. So it's pretty easily accessible. A good investment and I would recommend just a simple crate like this to anybody. It's so easy to do. I also updated my paddle uh, from what I was, I pretty much had a hand-me-down paddle. It worked for a little bit, but it didn't come apart. It was, it was in bad shape. So this paddle I, I got it at Bass Pro. So I purchased this paddle keep and added it to the kayak. It doesn't come with anything like this. This kayak is very simple, very bare bones. All it comes with is a Scotty rod holder. Um, and it comes with a paddle sometimes when you purchase it. So you need to add all of this extra stuff to really be more effective on the water. It's a simple addition, again, inexpensive and it helps to keep your paddle out of the way. They have paddle keeps here um, that you're supposed to put your paddle up on top here, but it just stays across. You can't do it here because of the Scotty rod mount. So it's, it's really useless to have it. It's got one on the other side as well. One use for these paddle holder pieces here that are helpful for one, when I'm kind of moving between spots and I don't want to throw my rods in the back, I can literally just put them here and paddle keep them and they'll they'll stay and, and stay dry but really what i use this for is for this the, the power pole i've got an eight foot power pole stakeout pole that I actually won in a raffle so it's pretty nice here i get to just keep it on the kayak like this and it stays out of the way and it just pokes through. Sometimes I'll feed it through here if I want it, if I'm not planning on using it at all. But you can just put the paddle keep on there and it's staying, it's not going anywhere. This power pole actually won in a raffle, uh, like I was saying, from Real Adventure Kayak Fishing. Those guys at uh, Real Adventure Kayak Fishing, Cyrus Dooley and, and the, the guys that help them out with that page. It's a Facebook page, it's on Instagram. And they're always starting to do giveaways. They do kayak meetups. So definitely a good place to go if you want to meet local anglers or just just get knowledge, share knowledge. And um, there's a lot of people on it that are super helpful and willing to help you catch fish and give you advice. Um, as you saw probably on, on this side of the kayak. I've got a couple of stickers. Obviously these enhance your capability of, of catching fish there's no question about it so you need to add those to your kayak uh, personalize it make it your own i'm not sponsored by any of these uh, of these guys or any of these groups i wear their apparel i pay for it myself um, i'm not just telling you this because i'm sponsored i am not sponsored by any of these guys i am a customer and i enjoy all three of these groups so check them out i'll add their links also in the description so you can check out their pages and see what what they're doing um, a lot of good stuff happening out fishing as you can see i wear the shirts they're they're spf 30 and higher they keep me cool they keep me dry and they keep me safe from the sun especially here in florida it's a big deal but they do a ton of stuff with um, oa gives when you check out their website you'll be able to see everything they do but uh, really awesome groups of people all three of them also, got this guy. It's a uh, custom for Real Adventure Kayak Fishing. It wasn't done by Cyrus in the group. This is actually done by Fishing Rebel Fishing Alliance, as you see there. Um, just a, an awesome, awesome ruler. I wanted something that went up to, you know, this 44, 45 inches. I intend to catch just a, a ton of fish on this thing. And literally this I keep just here behind my seat. It doesn't go anywhere. I won't lose it. Um, thinking about tethering it down uh, just in case. You never know. Never know. So that's the basic walk down of this kayak. It's what I've done to it. It helps me uh, get on fish. It helps me stay on fish. 
I don't have any fish finders or depth finders on it because I don't really fish in very deep water and I'm fairly familiar with the area that I'm fishing in. So don't, don't really need it at this point in time. When I update my kayak, might be a different story as my range is going to definitely change. So if you have any questions about any of these mods, anything I did on here, how I did it, why I did it, or you're interested in, in seeing how, how these were built, um, maybe I can take them apart for you and get some measurements on it if you're interested in this exactly. But really I just took a bunch of different ideas off of YouTube and made it my own and, and figured out what works for me. And it could be different for everybody. And also don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for future content as it's only going to get better from here. Tight lines and be blessed.